All right, you may take your seats. Uh, someone remarked to me this morning when they saw the hymns and that they said, Pastor Dave, we're going to have a revival service here today. So uh, thank you very much for the wonderful music for today. As I was reading the epistle today from the book of Hebrews, there were two words that got my attention. Hold fast. Think about those two simple words, hold fast. What does hold fast mean? So I looked it up in the dictionary and it says continue to believe in or adhere to an idea or principle. Listen to that again. Continue, not just to believe, continue to believe in or adhere to an idea or principle. So the big word in that definition is the word continue. I thought of hold fast as hang on, don't let go, don't give up. I got out my Bible concordance. A concordance is a book that preachers have um, that you can look up a word and then you can see the various scriptures that have that word in it. And so I looked up hold fast how it is used in the scriptures, how we're called to hold fast to issues that affect our faith and Christian discipleship. And there were 100 scriptures that have the words hold fast or words similar to the same meaning of hold fast, 100. Listen to a few of them. The first one, the first hold fast in the Bible is in the book of Deuteronomy. And it says this, fear the Lord your God and serve God. Hold fast to God and take your oaths in God's name. Hold fast and take your oaths in God's name. In the book of Hebrews, we see the hold fast four times. And it is very important in the book of Hebrews that the preacher, the writer, is calling us to hold fast to Jesus Christ in our lives. There are four. Listen to them. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, who is Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. But Jesus was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope until the end. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. And then for our scripture today, let us hold fast, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. For Christians, we are to look at hold fast as continue to believe and adhere in our faith to Jesus Christ. No matter what may go on in our lives, we are called to hold fast, to hold on, to don't let go. The book of Hebrews, it was written by a preacher whose whole purpose is to bolster the faith of a congregation that is wavering, to remain steadfast in their faith in spite of any personal disappointments, persecutions, tragedies. Listen to what Tom Long, who is a professor of preaching at Emory University, where Candler School of Theology is, what he has to say about this particular scripture. He writes, the preacher is not preaching into a vacuum. He is addressing a real and urgent pastoral problem one that seems astonishingly contemporary. <laughs> His congregation is exhausted. They are tired. And though those two are words that we hear all the time. People are exhausted. We're tired. In this congregation of Hebrews, they are tired of serving the world tired of worship, tired of Christian education, tired, tired of being peculiar and whispered about in society, tired of the spiritual struggle, try, tired of trying to keep their prayer life going, tired of Jesus. 
their hands droop and their knees are weak. Attendance is down at church and they're losing confidence. The threat is that worn down and worn out, they will drop their end of the rope and drift away. They're tired of walking the walk. Many of them are considering taking a walk, leaving the community and falling away from faith. The writer of Hebrews is telling his congregation and our congregation not to let go of our faith. We are called to hold on to the challenges that we face in our faith. The times when we feel burdened and we just can't go on. The time that we feel our faith has been shattered when we're ready to give up. When we feel that we're into the rope. When we say to ourselves, I've had it. The preacher is telling us to hold fast, to hold on, to not let go. And then the preacher tells us this. He tells us that we are not alone because we have the church and we have disciples to help us. Listen to the scripture. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as we see the day approaching. We know what's going on. The congregation is like ours, tired, worn out. And this preacher is being a cheerleader for them. And I thought, what is going on in our lives to call us to hold fast? We've dealt with COVID, it seems, forever. We feel isolated. The number one headline in the news is inflation. I think gas is expensive here. When I was in California, it was four eighty-five regular gas. Supply chain, holidays, how are we going to do holidays, politics, vaccines, the need for more workers. All these things are bringing us down. We read about teachers that are exhausted, preachers. I had a conference call with a group of preachers this past week and everyone is just tired. We're battered and blasted by the storms of current events. So there are four things the scripture tells us. The first, let us hold fast. God is faithful. Jesus is faithful. The Holy Spirit is faithful to us. The second is this. The preacher tells us to consider how to provoke one another to love and good news. The word provoke, it just seems like a hard word, provoke. But when he uses the word provoke, he's telling us to influence fellow disciples how we should live and get on the path of the church, of how Jesus calls us to live. The third, not neglecting to meet one another as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. He had problems back then of people not coming to church. Thank goodness we have in-person and live stream so that we can be here together as one. If we had one without the other, where would we be? He's telling us to make it a habit of being in church and worship. And you know, since COVID, it's been hard. We have gotten into a new routine of life the past 16, 18 months. And it is so easy to get in other routines than Sunday at 10 a.m. Sports seem more exciting than church. Being in nature calms us more than church. The Sunday paper is more interesting than church. Sleeping in on Sunday morning provides a more profound Sabbath rest. I call it Saint Mattress. The scripture is telling us not to lose the church in our lives, but to worship together. But we don't just worship what we take the next step. Worship is more than just showing up. 
It's about following Jesus Christ and living by his teachings and living in the power of the Holy Spirit that is infused in our lives. And then the preacher ends by saying, and all the more as we see the day approaching. Friends, hold fast. A new day is coming when we give all of our hope and faith in the person, life, and resurrection, and Jesus coming again. Admit it, friends. We're tired. And I think about that wonderful spiritual, precious Lord, take my hand, and the words are these, precious Lord, take my hand, lean on me, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. We're called to keep the faith. Keep the faith we're on the mountaintops of life. Keep the faith when we're in the valley of despair. Keep the faith that God has faith in us. Hang on. And we're called to shine the light of Christ into the world with a new heaven and a new earth. Let me close with a situation that I had with, with my life this week. So I was away in um, Arizona and California for uh, 10 days. Came back and I brought all this new food that I needed because I just let the refrigerator become empty. And I went up to the giant and just brought all this food and put it in the refrigerator. And the next morning, there was water all over the kitchen floor, and the refrigerator had conked out. And I told you about that a couple weeks ago. So I went looking around for a refrigerator, and they told me, oh, Pastor Dave, December 10th, we can get your refrigerator. And I says, no, I went somewhere else and somewhere else. And finally, they arrived last Monday. And in the meantime, I kind of took the little refrigerator that's in the Wesley room, thank goodness for that, so I've been living out of a refrigerator about the size of this chair. And there was one day I just said, I've had enough. I'm not going to live out of, eat out of this little refrigerator. Pastor Dave was going out to eat for breakfast. So I went out to eat for breakfast. I won't name the place, but it's on Route 29. You make a left. You know what I'm talking about. And Pastor Dave, with this daylight savings times, I'm getting up at 5 a.m. instead of 6 a.m. It takes me six months to get used to daylight savings time. Then they change the time again. So I got online and I thought, you know, they've got to be open at 6 a.m. And I looked and no, 7 a.m. So I waited around, went up to the place, almost said the name. Um, and it was 7 a.m., walked in there. And there was an African-American woman standing next to me, and we were waiting. She had done uh, a takeout, and I was waiting to be seated. And so we started just talking about things and, you know, waiting around for to get served or waited on. And I said, yeah, I said, I'm a preacher. I haven't been here in almost two years. And it's interesting that when Pastor Dave says, I'm a preacher, I get two responses usually. One response that happens the most is when I say I'm a preacher, kind of people get silent and they start to walk away a little bit. You know, we don't need to hear from Jerry Falwell or Billy Graham today or Jimmy Swagger. They kind of do that to me. And the other times is when I say I'm a preacher, it kind of resonates with people and we start up a little conversation. And so here I was all alone with this woman because the rest of the wait staff were in the back getting our breakfast ready. And she said, you know, Pastor, I'm tired. She said, my mother died of COVID. And then my sister and husband died of cancer this year about the same time. could just see this woman just falling apart right before me. A death of COVID of a loved one and a husband and sister to die of cancer. And I just stared at her for a moment 
And then I just said, can you tell me your first name? And she says, it's Tina. And I said, well, Tina, there's no one else here. It's just you and I. We're going to pray. And I prayed that morning for Tina to hold fast. To don't give up. And after that prayer, I could just see all of that hurt and pain just leave her body. And she got her bag of breakfast and she walked out that door with a renewed faith. I'm quite sure she walked out of that door a lot faster than she walked into that place. My experience with Tina that morning at a breakfast place, I will take that experience to the grave. It goes in my journal. And I pray for Tina. So what I'd like us to do today is we're going to pray. I'm going to offer a prayer. And there's going to be a part of that prayer that I will ask us to name people who we feel are need to hold fast in their lives. And you can name their names either out loud or silently. And we're going to take a time to pray for ourselves as well. So we're going to have some background music as we pray. So let's go to God in prayer, all right? Gracious and loving God, we're called in the scripture today to hold fast. And there are so many times in our lives right now that it's just hard to hold on. We want to let go. We just want to give up. But we're called to hold fast. We want to remember that disciple that Jesus saw in the breakfast place. Her name was Tina. And we offer continued prayers for her as she goes on her way, exhausted, tired, the loss of a loved one with COVID, the loss of two loved ones by cancer where she feels all alone, deserted. But we give thanks for the love of your son, Jesus Christ, and may it enter her life. May your Holy Spirit be infused in her life so that she can go on. But we know that Tina is not alone. But all of us at times feel that we have to hold fast because we just want to let go. We want to give up. And so we name now those persons that we know in our lives that are in that predicament. And we pray that you'll enter into their lives and let them know that they are loved. So let us take a time to name out loud or silently those persons, even ourselves, that need your love. And I pray for Dana and Lynn and Dee Dee and the loss of Al. I pray for the loss of Linda. I pray for all of the Doolin congregation, for all that are here with us live stream, for those who aren't with us. Oh God, we remember the words of precious Lord. Take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. For I am weak, I am tired, I am worn. Hear our cry, hear our call. Oh Jesus, take our hand, lest I fall. Take our hands, Lord, precious Lord. Precious Lord, lead us home. And we give thanks for this home of Doolin Church that we have. That we can be here with one another, that we can provoke one another in love. For all this we give thanks in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and we all say together,